Hey everybody, a super exciting one today. So this is where we break down the actual Bitcoin holdings and we show you exactly where you sit in your percentile. So channels about math, money and freedom. And the math behind this one took, this latest edition took nearly 10 days to put together. So I hope you guys appreciate the result. And I believe it is the best study of its kind on the interweb anywhere. I don't know anybody else who take the time to do this. But anyway, big thank you as well to Watson for helping me in putting a lot of this together. So uh, it's nice to have some help. I had to put the first two together myself. Anyway, first big message for everybody is be calm. It's not too late. Bitcoin is very, very important for the future of this planet. And remember, uh, less than 500,000 people will ever have a whole Bitcoin. So keep that in perspective. Now let's talk about the analysis framework. So the thesis is, first of all, the what got me into Bitcoin in the first place was the scarcity of my background in economics. And by aggregating public data and sources, we really could track all of the 21 million coins and where they are. And the mission was to create the most comprehensive tracker of where all the coins are, who is holding these coins, and where you fit in the percentiles of ownership. I call this the Bitcoin pyramid. So uh, the sources, we looked at uh, companies and miners, public filings, press releases, investor relations, news articles, individuals, Glassnode, social media, funds and exchanges, fund websites, exchange websites, more news articles, SEC disclosures, and some more news articles as well for the government stashes as well. So what we did was, this is probably one of the most important uh, building blocks that we had is we looked at the glass node distribution with regard to balances and graphed a line using the formula above which is very critical you can see from this chart here uh, where the satoshi, satoshi stash lies on the very very far right corner in terms of entity balance of bitcoin and up on the far left you can see the smaller the balance the larger the number of holders and uh, that's just the nature of this beast. So I know I get questioned every day from people on Patreon and other places is, you know, if I have, say, for example, 0 0.7 Bitcoin, where does that put me on the food scale? And such, and such questions all the time. So this will answer all of those questions in great detail. So let's go through. Uh, second of all, it's important to know as well to have, first of all, where Bitcoins are stashed. So for example, one person could hold Bitcoin on multiple wallets. One person could hold one Bitcoin in a single wallet or more individuals could share a common wallet. So that's why it's uh, not as trivial as meets the eye. And there's tons of permutations and combinations of that as well. And remember, simple is not easy, but we again are confident that this is the best on the web. So. From that, we could account for all these coins, except for about 135,000 coins. Um, now, this takes into account lost coins. The backup data we have brings us to about 3.94 million lost coins. We have the Satoshi lockup of 1.04 million coins. We have uh, coins in governments, treasuries, miners, exchange holdings, and individual holdings. And the keynote to here is really to look at the next slide. And that is 19% of coins are lost, 0.6% are unaccounted for, but 41% are in individual holdings, 11.2% on exchanges. Miners have about 3.7% and they're continuing to hodl as well. Corporate company treasuries are about 3%, which includes some private companies as well. Government holdings, uh, 3%. Fund holdings, 5.1%. Satoshi lockup. 5%, unmined Bitcoins, 10.7%, and I mean, as I mentioned, lost coins, 19.7%. Now let's look at some of the exchanges real quick. Uh, Huobi is the biggest, uh, Binance is number two. Between them, they have about 600,000 Bitcoins, which is equivalent to the amount that Grayscale has for Bitcoin. And you see other exchanges down the line there as well. Now, in terms of fund holdings, here we see Grayscale, Big Daddy, which uh, they might be shedding a couple of thousand Bitcoins, about 16,000 to cover expenses. But again, we don't expect that to have a big impact 
from the middle of July onwards. And there's some other new names in there as well. The new ETFs this year are 3IQ, Purpose ETF, ETC Group, and there's more to come as well. So that's the breakdown of the actual fund holdings. In terms of government holdings, this hasn't changed much, but the Bulgarian government apparently has 213,000, Chinese government, 194,000, and that could be climbing because of some recent confiscations. US government is said to still hold about 144,000, Ukraine government about 46,000, and North Korea, believe it or not, Kim Jong-un may still have 30,000 Bitcoins. So we'll see. Talk about game theory, that would be interesting. Now, in terms of uh, corporate holdings, the really interesting one here is Block One. This is a Peter Thiel finance business. They apparently have 164,000 Bitcoin, which makes the 105,000 of my strategy look small. Tesla still at 42,000. The earnings are coming out next week. We'll see what happens. Galaxy Digital. One of the reasons I own Galaxy Digital is they have a big stash, 16,400 Bitcoins. You've got Voyager there at 12,000. And some estimates that some companies like Citibank, Fidelity, Morgan Stanley, etc., NASDAQ all have some Bitcoin that they purchased a while back. We're not sure of those exact numbers. You've got Hut Mining in there, Mass Mutual, Riot Blockchain, and a bunch of others. But uh, the total of all this is about 462,000 Bitcoins, nearly half a million Bitcoins. Individual holdings. This is 7.6 million, which includes the Satoshi stash, 1.04 million. We have Max Kaiser. Uh, it apparently is giving away 10,000 and 30,000 friends back in the day and Shamath and some of the other key names here. We're going to look at some of these key individuals as well as we go forward. So before we jump into the individual holdings, it's important to note that a humpback whale typically has greater than 5,000 bitcoins. Uh, a whale is above 1,000 bitcoins, up to 5,000. A shark is 500 to 1,000. Dolphin, 100 to 500. Fish, 50 to 100. Octopus, 10 to 50. Crab, 1 to 10. And a shrimp, or less than one bitcoin. This will be important later when we do the breakdowns and the percentiles. So basically, we map everything back to marine creatures. This is the breakdown by the marine species. So here you will see uh, what we did was we took all of the different estimates across miners, exchanges, the humpback whales, sharks, dolphins, etc. And we broke them out and we removed things like lost coins, the Satoshi lockup, the fund holdings, government holdings, company treasuries to break out the actual individuals that are left holding the actual uh, individual bitcoins. And this is important for our calculations down the line. But before we jump into those, let's talk about some of the key big holders. We estimate that Max Kaiser has at least 300,000 Bitcoin. He's been involved in Bitcoin since it was $10 a coin. And he used to give friends like Alex Jones a laptop with 10,000 Bitcoin on it, which he lost. That could be worth quite a bit today. Apparently, he also is said to have given Alec Baldwin and Russell Brand uh, some Bitcoin as well when it was under $10. But if you're giving 10, 20, 30,000 Bitcoin away like that, even at $10, it still is kind of substantial. But it means you must have a lot yourself. So we estimate he has at least 300,000 Bitcoin. Shamath, uh, this guy, some believe he has 1 million Bitcoin. Some say he's got 100,000. I reckon he's got about 200,000 Bitcoins. He bought in 2014 when the price was between 580 and 850. And uh, he also apparently is a record that he bought some land for about $1.6 million using about 2,700 Bitcoin, which would be worth uh, quite a bit today. So that's another guy, a big, big whale. Mike Novogratz, we're not sure exactly, but he was also an early adopter of Bitcoin, started buying around 2015. And uh, we reckon he probably has 150,000. It is known what his net worth is in the billions, and a lot of it is made up of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we deduce those numbers. The Winklevoss twins, now they spent their Facebook settlement of I think it was about $65 million on Bitcoin after meeting somebody in a beach in Ibiza who convinced them, hey, Bitcoin's a thing. So they bought it in around 2014 when the price was very low. So $65 million back then bought you a lot of Bitcoin. We reckon they have 200,000. Roger Ver, another guy, he calls himself Bitcoin Jesus for his promotion of Bitcoin. He now promotes uh, Bitcoin Cash. He was born and raised not far from here in Silicon Valley, and he sold explosives on eBay and later pleaded guilty to felony charges and went to prison for 10 months. And then he got out of the US and went to Japan in 2005. 
um, but he's been involved with Bitcoin in the early days when it was at pennies and he always had money. So many believe he has at least 400,000 Bitcoin. I put him in at about 100,000. Then finally, uh, Barry Silbert, the last of the big guys we're tracking, 90,000. We have a lot of information, a lot of others, but uh, you know, he, again, very early adopter, very wise guy. So now there's other folks, tons and tons of other people, you know, we know Raul Paul, etc., Paul Tudor Jones, Ray Dalio, all these guys have been buying. We just don't know how much. It's not public. But I guarantee you, there's a whole bunch of other whales out there. We just don't know exactly what they hold. So let's talk about the new Bitcoin club. The new Bitcoin 1% club refers to the top 1% of Bitcoin holders worldwide. And estimates for the threshold range between 0.28 and 15 Bitcoin. But we crack the code on exactly what it takes to be in the top 1%. And this is the interesting part of this presentation. Now, first of all, before we jump in, the individual holdings deep dive. The good news is there's been a big shift towards a more dispersed ownership of Bitcoin supply over the past years. And that has become more apparent, especially when we look at the relative change in supply across these sizes. Now, the smallest players, they are shrimps and crabs. They've increased their holdings by 130% since 2017. Woohoo! Well done, everybody. I know on Patreon, I got a bunch of new hole coiners, like over 500, which is fantastic. The second smallest holders are octopus and fish. They've also grown by 14%. Not 130% but 14% which is still good. On the other hand, large entities like dolphins and sharks and whales and humpbacks have decreased their Bitcoin ownership by about 3% and 7% respectively. So the good news is the smaller retail investors are getting their hands on more Bitcoin. Now let's look at this. This is the money chart and the slide after it. So this is what I call the new Bitcoin percentile club. So we broke out granular buckets. Uh, if you have from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 Bitcoin, your average holding is 0.135 Bitcoin. There's about 99,000 of people in this range, and that will put you in the top 5% of all Bitcoin holders. So again, doesn't take a lot to get 0.135. I always urge people, you know, try to get 0.1 of a Bitcoin and then grow it from there. But even having 0.135 Bitcoin can be life-changing in the future, especially if you look at some of the crazy estimates. Now, granular bucket, 1.5 to 1.6 Bitcoins. Average holding, 1.5 Bitcoins. It's 20,000 of these people, and that'll put you in the top 2% of all Bitcoin holders. If you have 3.6 to 3.7 Bitcoins, average holding about 3.6 Bitcoin, there's about 7,800 of those people. That'll put you in the top 1%. Now, a quick... Uh, not a mea culpa, but things have changed since I last did this a few months ago. Basically, we have more data, more math. We did a lot more number crunching. And also, retail investors have gotten more into Bitcoin. As I said, the big whales and the humpbacks and the fish and the sharks, they've all reduced their load a little bit. They started buying actually just last week, which is a very bullish sign. But retail has gotten their hands on some of the Bitcoin. So they haven't been spooked by all the FUD out there. And that's why... When the last time I did this, it was about 3.36 Bitcoin to be in the top one percentile. Now it is gone up. You need about 3.6. So it's gone up by 0.3 of a Bitcoin. But that's much easier to do now because last time I did this, Bitcoin was at $50,000. So if you have 6.8 Bitcoin, it's about 2,000 of these people that have exactly 6.8 to 6.9 Bitcoin, that'll put you in the top 0.5% which is huge. If you have more than 10 Bitcoin, between 10 and 50 Bitcoin, the average holding is 21 Bitcoin. 72,000 people have this amount. That'll put you in the top 0.1%. Now people get confused. It's like, how come there's 72,000 people in this range and there was only 2,000 people in the previous range? Well, that previous range was from 6.8 Bitcoin to 6.9 Bitcoin. This range is from 10 Bitcoin to 50 Bitcoin. So it's a lot bigger and includes a lot of... Uh, a lot of individuals that have been around for a long time probably includes it all lost coins as well the next group if you want to be in the top 0.01 percent with an average holding about 660 bitcoin uh, there's only 1500 of these people and it'll cost you a pretty penny today so that is the new percentile club and i know people keep asking me we got a question today okay if i have 0.7 bitcoin where does that put me boom 
Now, I will have a detailed spreadsheet of all the allocations I'll share as well with the Patreon capitalists later tonight. And finally, what I have put together as well is the cost to enter these percentile clubs. I call this the Bitcoin food pyramid. So if you want to be in the top 5%, you need greater than 0.135 Bitcoin, and that'll cost you today at the current price of Bitcoin, just under 33,000, that'll cost you $4,400. If you want to be in the top 2%, that means you need more than 1.53 Bitcoin. And that'll cost you $50,000. If you want to be in the top 1%, you need greater than 3.6 Bitcoin. That'll cost $118,000 to be in the top 1%, that very rarefied air. Remember, there's 51 million millionaires on Earth. They'll never, ever be able to have a whole Bitcoin. So try grab it while you can if you want to be there. Now, for the top 0.5%, you need greater than 6.8 Bitcoins. That'll cost you a quarter of a million dollars, approximately. And if you want to be in the top 0.1%, you need more than 21 Bitcoin. And that'll cost you $686,000. I hope this answers a lot of questions, but we have the very detailed breakout, all stratified by 0.1 Bitcoin increments. So again, drop a comment below if you want to see that. So only one Bitcoin, again, will put you in the top 2.54% of all Bitcoin holders. And remember, with a max of probably 14 million Bitcoin, because so many are lost in the Satoshi lockup, and a world population of nearly 8 billion, owning one full Bitcoin is so important for the future. We are so early and adoption is just beginning. So it's a super exciting time to be alive. Just stay healthy, everybody out there. Now, another question I get is 10 coiners. Okay, if you have 10 Bitcoin, you are in the top 0.17% of all Bitcoin holders. Woohoo, good for you. And other ways to own Bitcoin. I always get this as well. Do you have to own Bitcoin itself? It's best to always own the pure form, but what you can also do is you can own one Bitcoin by owning 87.5 MicroStrategy shares or 1,059 GBTC shares. And of course, they are selling at a little bit of a discount right now. So, hope you like this content. Hit the like, subscribe if you haven't already. This is the channel for the most information and the best data out there on the internet. Big thank you as well to everyone on Patreon. Thanks all. Bye.